beautiful grainy afternoon. I am ready to start disassembling this. I'm gonna take this back over to my work. We're gonna get it powder coated, reassemble there, do a few test cuts, make sure everything's squared up. I'm gonna bring it back. For those of you that have not been following along for the past few episodes, I've decided I wanted to start my own CNC plasma business. But there was a few problems. I didn't have a lot of money for the equipment and I didn't really know how to get started. I took a leap of faith and decided the best way to get started was by making my very own CNC plasma table. Today, we're picking up by reassembling the freshly powder coated parts. Off camera, I installed these sheet metal gussets by throwing a few self tappers into the square tubing frame. I put those there to tie everything together and really give the structure some rigidity. So far, besides the gussets, I haven't done anything new. So I went ahead and zip tied a sharpie to my torch holder and I just ran a generic program through it. As you can see, before it was ready to accept a torch, it needed a little bit of work. And this is what I'm going to call the cheap version 1. Which is a perfect time to interrupt our regularly scheduled program to tell you guys that I had a cool opportunity for you guys, potentially. If this looks familiar, then that's good. So a lot of you guys that are watching actually have your own JD's Garage plasma table, and most of their parts, hardware, is made out of 3D printed uh, material. It just seemed way too light duty for my needs and what I wanted. So I went ahead and got a few quotes on a 6061 aluminum piece. I have two. I have yet to try this on my actual machine. Um, I'm assuming it should work since the 3D printed version works, but if it does work, I will give the second one away. So whoever wants it, you gotta like, comment, subscribe on all three for now of the past plasma cutter videos. I'm gonna be honest, but I've never really shipped something out like this. So you're gonna have to be in the US and when we're emailing back and forth, you're gonna have to take it easy on me. Cause like I said, yeah, I never shipped anything out like this, but I'm really excited to start engaging with you guys more. I do have material to make probably eight to 10 more of these. If there's interest and I can figure out how to ship these out, I will probably put these up for sale on my website. If that's something you're interested in, go ahead, drop a few comments down and we'll see what, what happens. Anyways, back to the video. Just Thanks. a small disclaimer for clarity. This entire build is my own creation. While I did take inspiration from JD's Garage and Langmuir Systems Crossfire Pro, I made substantial changes to the design from the frame and the electrical system to the bearing blocks. Although some components might be compatible with those systems, my primary goal was to create a cost-effective machine suited for production work, customized to my specific needs. I appreciate the innovative ideas from JD's Garage and Langware, which influenced my project. The final product is a unique result of my efforts and modifications. As you guys can see, I opted to go with the Hypertherm 45 XP with the machine torch mount. It was a bigger pain in the ass trying to get one than you might think. But nonetheless, it's here, it's slick, and it's ready to cut. Kinda. So I ran into a problem at my job where we only have three phase power and this machine ended up being a single phase 220 volt system. This got me thinking that I never really checked out the power specs before I bought the machine. Not the end of the world, I just gotta do some rewiring at my job, but at my house, that's gonna be another story. Though, we'll cross that road when we get there. I decided to take it slow here and try a few test pierces. And they really didn't turn out that bad. I mean, granted, the torch was crooked and a few other things. Yeah, so what you're seeing here is my live reaction to me realizing that the ground clamp was never actually attached. And I was just mind blown that is, you would actually get an arc, much less pierce through the seven gauge material. Then you see here, the pierce time is literally cut in half with the ground cable attached. I felt a little stupid, but at the same time, I was really impressed with the machine and its capabilities. And the next logical step was to try and cut a straight line, but I had a curious coworker. You're a little crooked. Oh, hey. Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? 
without the ground. So I ended up taking three passes, one at 15 amps, 35 amps, and 45 amps. And you can tell I'm definitely going to need a water table because all that smoke, I was not having that. Yeah, so here we have the 15, the 35, and the 45 amps with the few pierce tests. Flip it over on the back side and you can definitely tell that the 45 amps was the way to go for this 7 gauge material. For those test cuts, I was actually using a remote on off switch that came with the hypertherm. Well, I had to actually pay like an extra 100, 200 something bucks for it. But what I'm doing here is just wiring this in into my control relay so the computer can actually turn the torch on and off. Once I got that wired up, I threw in another generic program and decided we should probably test this out. So right here, it's just mapping out the envelope of the cutting area just to make sure nothing crashes. We're about to just pull send this. I didn't even test fire through the computer yet. I just hooked up the relay to the plasma cutter here. I'll just show you real quick before I fire it, but I haven't even test, test fired it or anything. I don't know what's gonna happen. Cable to the relay in a normally open state going to the back of the plasma cutter. I don't even know what speed they have this going at, to be honest, but running 35 amps and we have an error i don't know what that means i might have to look at that never mind i know what that means it means the torch is off it has its own off button on the side here i just turned that off because i was programming now it's good ready for this they go to zero going to zero and if i hit space bar it'll run the job so, let's find out. It didn't do anything. Why didn't it do anything? Oh, shit. It did. Hell yeah. Yeah, to this day, I'm really not quite sure why it didn't fire, but I'm assuming it had something to do with me hitting the space bar, not the actual cycle start button. But who knows? Once the tests were done, I just finished hard wiring everything in. And what I wanted to show you guys here is this Arduino cable. There's like a female to male end, a flush panel mount where you guys don't have to open your cabinet once you want to connect to the Arduino. If you'd like to check that out, just uh, look in the description and you'll find something down there. Here, I'm just showing you guys how I mounted my control cabinet, which I kind of mounted it on the back side of the actual machine. This gave me a little bit of worry because I wasn't sure what was gonna happen when I put the water table up there and how much splashback I was gonna get. It is a watertight enclosure, but I mean, even just with all these sparks getting thrown around, I'm a little concerned about that. Here, there's just a programming error where I cut the outside before I cut all the inside shapes. So I just went back and redid that and confirmed everything was working all right. But if you notice here on the other sheet, I was actually testing out some engraving and a lot of people don't know, you can actually engrave with a plasma cutter. Though with the regular compressed air, it turns out a little sketchy, but if you throw some argon on there, at least that's what it said in the hypertherm manual, and it looks pretty crispy. This was pretty much the last part I cut out, and by that time, I was really sick of sweeping up and inhaling all of the plasma dust. So I got to work on making the water tape. I realize how much of a silver spoon I have with the opportunity to use these industrial machines for personal projects. And I couldn't be more grateful. It saves me time and money. I know not everyone is fortunate enough to have things like these at their disposal, and I promise you guys, I'm not taking it for granted. But that also doesn't mean that I'm not going to use these every chance I get. Here I'm using this 350 ton Ermoxin press brake to actually form up my water table. It was my first time making a program for this thing, so eh. I mean, it could have been better, but it, it's working for what I need. So I made this water pan out of 7 gauge material, which has like a decimal equivalent value of about 0.1793. Let me tell you, this thing was heavy as a mother. It might not look like it, but trying to pick this up and place it inside the water table and then combining with the fact that my bend lines were off a little bit, it was it was a good workout. 
Looking back, I think I probably should have designed these slats so I could actually cut them out on my own plasma table, which I still might be able to. I haven't really tested it out yet, but I figured if this machine's here, it's going to be 10 times better than anything I could ever make, so I might as well use it. After we got them all cleaned up, I assembled everything together, threw a few tacks in each corner, and then just plopped it in the water table. It was a perfect fit, and it really brings the entirety of the table together. That's all I have for now, guys. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and click on one of my other previous CNC plasma cutter videos.